Many business owners in the Northwest Territories say increased power rates will be passed down onto customers. The Northwest Territories Power Corporation applied last week for an overall increase of 25% in rates, citing low water levels and increasing diesel prices. The CBC's Luke Carroll has the story. It's a huge hike and it just seems like these hikes never end. Adrian Bell is president of the Yellowknife Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so I've had a lot of business owners reach out to me and just ask, you know, what can be done? Um, will, will there ever be a, a future where we see some, some decreases in these rates or is the expectation simply that businesses pass this on forever to consumers? He's not the only one with that question. Joshua Earls runs Rampart Rentals in Norman Wells. It's one of two grocery stores in town. He says one of its biggest expenses is power to operate the refrigerator and freezers. At that point, a lot of your our cooler items and freezer items are going to get impacted by that as we're going to have to raise costs just to help cover these power costs, you know. And I mean, let alone all the lights and everything else that we have. Earl says with the community already dealing with skyrocketing fuel costs, the affordability situation in Norman Wells is getting scary. The Public Utilities Board is responsible for making a decision on whether the power rate hike will go ahead. They're expected to release this decision by the end of the calendar year. Luke Carroll, CBC News, Yellowknife. The NWT is making changes to the way the territory's power corporation is governed. The move comes as NWT residents face another potential rate increase, as you just heard. And some experts say a new structure could help. Natalie Pressman explains. NTPC's board of directors are all deputy ministers or assistant deputy ministers. They're not energy experts and they're already pretty busy running their departments. According to Yellowknife MLA Shauna Morgan, that holds back innovation. The concern is that it that by having the board be deputy ministers, it would just be a, a vehicle of sort of maintaining status quo and stability, you know, that they would be the safety net to catch any, you know, wild or crazy thing the power corporation tried to do, but otherwise that they're sort of a caretaker board that's just there to maintain status quo and just carry on. Um, but the problem is that the status quo is sending us on a downward spiral. The government is planning to recruit new board members. At least four will be independent and it could be as many as eight. Two seats will continue to be for government officials and one expert says that combines expertise with government know-how. The hybrid model has the best of both worlds because independent directors can, can bring you know expertise that might be needed. They can bring a fresh set of eyes. They are independent of, of the organization, of management. Um, and deputy ministers bring that sort of inner working and perspective of the sole shareholder and of the government. But another expert says total independence is best and that government officials face conflicts of interest. Does that board member act in the interest of government because that's kind of their day job, that's who pays them? Or do they act in the interest of the corporation because that's what the law, corporate law requires them to do? Both experts agree a new board could help shake up the power corp. If you want an overhaul and a new direction for any corporation, putting in place some new board members, some fresh blood is a good idea because it's the board's responsibility to approve the strategic direction of the organization. And so, yeah, yeah, I, think I would say that's, uh, that's a positive direction to go in if that's what you're looking to happen. The territorial government plans to share an expression of interest in early 2025 for the new positions. The minister says they're still in the process of outlining what they're looking for in new board members. That includes ensuring representation from different areas of the territory and maintaining expertise in energy policy. Natalie Pressman, CBC News, Yellowknife.